there was one more. <laughs> okay, let's now stand to sing our first song, which is Celebrate Celebration. Celebration. It's a vocal celebration using your imagination. It's a mental celebration. Celebrate family, gratefully. Celebrate life, celebrate love. Every day, in every way. sensation is a physical celebration peaceful meditation is a silent celebration celebrate unity you and me celebrate life celebrate love every day in every way So it is every situation is a chance for celebration, even aggravation is a teaching celebration, celebrate miracles and obstacles, celebrate life, celebrate love. One more? Okay. If it's okay. Yes, please. <laughs> I send my love over the mountains. I send my love over the sea. I send my love into the Joy over the mountains. I 
Good morning, beloveds. Namaste. Let's now, while you're standing, give each other the namaste greeting. Namaste, Zoomers. We love you. Namaste, Travis. Namaste, Jason and Shannon and Liam. Namaste, namaste. <laughs> All right, good morning, beloveds. Good morning, good morning, good morning. <laughs> My name is Reverend Elizabeth Raleigh Hogue. If you're just tuning in, uh, most of you already know who I am, but if you're here for the first time, that's who I am. <laughs> and if you're here for the second or third or 50th time, that's who I still am. And so I'm the spiritual director and senior minister here, and I want to welcome you to the Awakening Ways spiritual community where all that we ask is that you remain open to the possibility of uh, awakening to the loving heart, the inspired mind, and the sacred soul present in every life. We are an independent New Thought community, and we follow the teachings of Ernest Holmes. Welcome home. We've been waiting for you. <laughs> And we have an affirmation today. I invite you to please repeat after me. I am grateful, thankful, and much obliged. I am grateful, thankful, and much obliged. My heart overflows in appreciation for all that is. My heart overflows in appreciation for all that is. I am so blessed. 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 And so it is. And so it is. All right, now if you'll now take a moment to check in on Facebook and then silence your cell phones, please. Uh, if you're not checking in on Facebook, please silence those cell phones and our practitioner of the day, Jan, is going to come up and lead us in an Ernest Holmes reading and prayer. We're not. We are? We are. <laughs> terribly confusing, terribly confusing. So the Soul Support Team had the honor of uh, having Reverend Diane Davis join us, Davison, and so we now have 14 on the Soul Support Team. We have seven ministers. We have seven ministers and seven practitioners. And I remember when we first started 13 years ago, there were four of us, and that was all 
So um, we're very honored to have her meet us. So prayers are very important to us. Prayers are very important to be able to help you and to support you when you're going through your life. So you know that there are four ways. You probably can stand up there here and say them as well as we can because we say them every week. But first of all, please take a, uh, a card if you want to make an appointment with one of us to sit down and talk about something. Um, you can fill out a prayer request form that's over on the prayer table. Put that in the box. All 14 of us will pray for you all week. Uh, you can, if something comes up in the middle of the week, then send us an email, awakeningwaysatthegrid.net. We'll pick up on it and send it out to the team. And the last but not least, I will be in the back after the service is over if you would like a three-minute miracle prayer, as we call it. So, so gratitude is our seed of awakening this month, which is perfect for November. So in the five-step affirmative prayer developed by Dr. Ernest Holmes, gratitude is the critical fourth step. Once we acknowledge that spirit is all there is and that we are one with this power and we speak our words for some outcome, we give thanks in advance for knowing that what we have declared is already done in the mind of God. There is no more for us to do except release it unto the law of cause and effect to manifest in form. This is a high-level gratitude consciousness where we tap into the truth of how life really works. So now if you want to get comfortable, we'll go into our invocation. Close your eyes if you are comfortable. And on this beautiful, beautiful Sunday morning, where we are celebrating the blessings of fall, we realize how blessed we are to not only have this teaching that supports us and helps us as we move through our life, but to help the support of each other as we are all traveling this journey together. So we give thanks this morning. We give thanks, and as we go through our day, the answer to everything is yes. We say yes to life, yes to love, yes to our blessings. We give thanks for the musicians as they sh share their power and their love and their joy. And we give thanks for Reverend Elizabeth as she shares her wisdom and her passion and her love and her joy. So knowing that all of this is well, all of this is true, I simply release these words under the law, knowing it is so. And together we say, and so it is.
choices to let it be. God has empowered the water. We need in the water. We need in the water, children. We need in the water. God has empowered the water. Yeah. We in the water, wait in the water, wait in the water. God has empowered the water. Let's take a deep breath. Oh, thank you. Thank you. What a beautiful way to begin. Wow, can you feel the love in here or what? Can you feel the love and the joy? They had a wedding in here last night. And so as soon as I walked in, I could feel that love. And so that's why we have this beautiful uh, fabric and the lights. So we turned them on. How cool, huh? <laughs> I love it. Welcome, beloveds. I know there are some of you who are here for the first time, or maybe it's the first time uh, seeing me here. Thank you for coming, and we welcome you, and you are totally home. You belong here for sure. And if you just have started tuning in on, tuning in on Zoom, welcome. Welcome home. All right. So. The seed of awakening for the month of November is gratitude, and I realize that is maybe kind of basic, but it's so awesome to return to the basics, right? I mean, how wonderful it is, especially with Thanksgiving this month. This is really the month when everyone begins to feel that sense of gratitude, so we're sort of tapping into that, and we're going to kick up our gratitude practice a notch, if you're up for it. <laughs> and so I would like to begin by sharing what uh, the German mystic Meister Eckhart observed, which was, if the only prayer you ever say in your entire life is thank you, that will be enough. And so let's say that aloud together. Thank you, again. Thank you. One more time. Thank you. Now turn to the person next to you and say thank you. And now turn to the other person on the other side of you. Now everybody get up and let's move around and say thank you to as many people as you can. And if you're on Zoom, I invite you to say thank you. Thank you to each other. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, you look amazing. <laughs> thank you. All right, let's be seated. <laughs> thank you, beloveds. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Wow. All right, so <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Travis. <laughs> Doesn't that feel wonderful? Did you feel that little change in the energy in the room? It just, it just went, took off like a rocket. <laughs> just with those words, right? Thank you. How powerful are these two words? Especially when said as if we mean it, you know? Thank you. Thank you. Ernest Holmes says, an attitude of gratitude is most salutary. And, uh, and so salutary is health giving or producing good effects, beneficial. So an attitude of gratitude produces good effects. It's beneficial. It is health giving, which to me is like life giving. So studies have actually shown that gratitude, a gratitude practice 
leads to greater happiness, increased energy, improved kidney function, uh, reduced blood pressure, and a stronger heart. So why not say thank you, right? <laughs> why would we not practice this? Well, maybe we just forgot, right? <laughs> we forgot to be grateful because I know sometimes I forget and I know I'm not alone in here that <laughs> sometimes we forget, right? We get uh, irritated or we get frustrated or we may have some anxiety. We may get upset at someone, uh, someone in our family or uh, whatever it is, right? And we let that take us over. But uh, what we can do is transform that in the moment, right? We can just shift into gratitude. There's got to be something to be grateful for, even if it's not in that person, place, or thing, right? <laughs> you can find something to be grateful for and allow yourself to experience that energetic shift. Because as we know, you can't uh, hold more than one thought and consciousness at a time, right? And so as you think and you feel and sense the gratitude, the other thing falls away. So it's like a blackboard and you're taking an eraser and wiping it off and, uh, and the other thing will have to reappear, you know, but it doesn't reappear. You don't have to just keep wiping it off. If you're grateful, the gratitude is what takes over. And so that's our call for this month, to really be grateful. And every night before bed, I list at least 10 things I'm grateful for. And just before drifting off to sleep, it's like the last thing that is done. I'm grateful for this cute little baby that just walked into the room with her mom, <laughs> his or her mom. <laughs> oh, that just made me feel really good right there. That's cool. And then when I wake up in the morning, I also list at least 10 things I'm grateful for in my day ahead, right? Whether it's uh, what I already have in my life or what I'm going to experience. So it's kind of like setting my intention. So now I'm setting my gratitude intention for the day. I'm an, not only am I grateful right now because I woke up, but I'm grateful that this is an amazing day. This day is filled with possibility, and I'm so grateful for that. And I'm so grateful that uh, whatever, you know, fill in the blank, right? And that's how it goes. And then the greater unfoldment of my day occurs with so much gratitude expressed in the morning. So I go out, experience the best day ever, and then I feel great. My life is full, and my perspective, my mindset for the entire day is totally altered. This stuff works, right? It works. And so I also love to practice gratitude in paying my bills, and, uh, and so that is a common thing that you will hear about. So we pay our bills online. How many of you pay your bills online? Okay, right? And sometimes they're automatic. So I have set some of them automatic, but the majority of them, I actually like to keep them so I can go and pay them, and I pay them at the same time. So I consciously go in, and it's like, thank you, PG&E, for the gift of light and heat. And I imagine all of the uses that that gave to me, right? Because what do you hear normally? Why is this bill so high, right? <laughs> But as I thank, I'm grateful and thankful, I realize all of the gifts that I'm actually getting. Thank you, Spectrum, for the gift of internet access. This allows me to work from home and to surf the internet and send email and update the Awakening Ways Facebook page and, <laughs> and on and on, right? There's so much good. Thank you, Garbage Man, for picking up the waste. And you can imagine all those uses. Thank you, Water Company, for that steady flow all month, right? Wow. But most importantly, thank you, Sweet Spirit, for expressing as all of these companies and all of these wonderful services provided. And so uh, part of that is I consider, you know, hot showers and baths, washing dishes, doing laundry. I mean, I can find the gratitude for that, right? Because if I didn't have that, I wouldn't be able to do my laundry. What if I had to go and go somewhere else? I mean, some of us probably do, but you get what I'm saying. <laughs> At least we don't have to go down to the river. I'm going to be talking about India today, and I just had the, 
remembering of taking your laundry over to what's called the Do I think it's the Dobiwala, and then they actually take it down to the river. I didn't know that when I took it to them and thought, oh, they're going to do my laundry for me. That's wonderful. Then I got it back and it was like crispy. Anyway, <laughs> it's like, okay. Oh, you took it down to the Ganges. Oh, got it. Perfect. All right, cool. <laughs> So anyway, I'm overflowing with appreciation <laughs> as I bless the exchange of money for the excellent utilities and services provided, ultimately God, right? And I joyfully send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It's God in action, and I'm grateful, and so it is, yeah? So uh, as I was preparing this talk, or Spirit was preparing it through me, <laughs> Uh, I remembered one beautiful day my beloved uh, husband and I were hiking a hill behind our condo and we were talking and laughing and we were starting to really feel this hike in our bodies, you know, and, and I said, okay, let's share what we're grateful for right now because, you know, you could start to get, oh, this hurts. Uh. <laughs> So we started sharing back and forth, I'm grateful for this, I'm grateful for this, and, and each one of us, and then we started to feel this sense of giddiness, and, and we were really happy, and so we stopped for a moment to drink some coffee, and I looked down on the trail, and right where we had stopped, so there were some rocks in the formation of a heart. And it was like, wonder twin powers, activate, <laughs> form of rocks, shape of heart. Anyway, we were so happy about seeing this, right? It was just so cute. And I think of those things as like a beloved gift from the universe, from the divine itself. It's like, oh, and I love you too, right? As we give thanks, spirit responds. This invisible presence responds in ways that we can't even imagine. And so why not practice it? And this is something that I love to share too. Why not try it on, right? Say it's like an outfit. You try it on, see how it works out in your life. And then you can return it to the store from whence it came, <laughs> if you don't like it. <laughs> so having an attitude of gratitude really alters our perspective, doesn't it? It allows us to create consciously and to find more to be grateful for. Have you noticed that once you start listing gratitude, all these wonderful things start popping up into your mind? And it's a beautiful experience with the divine. So years ago, before I found Science of Mind, I remember being in a 12-step program, and, uh, and I was talking with my sponsor one day, and I was upset. There was some drama, you know, it's fresh, fresh in a 12-step program. So usually there's some drama in the beginning. <laughs> and, uh, and I was kind of still in the victim consciousness and was sharing this story. And I was so upset. And this, my sponsor stopped me right in the middle of the story. And I was baffled, right? Like, why aren't you listening to my story? And she stopped me and she said, I want you to give me 10 things you're grateful for right now. And I had nothing. I was, I was just so used to being in my story that it was just like this empty space, right? I had nothing. And, and then suddenly I got one, right? I was grateful for my sponsor. <laughs> Oh, and then I'm also grateful for this program, and I'm grateful for and grateful. And so I went into this list of 10 things I was grateful for, and that dissolved whatever the story was. And she's like, now what's going on? And I'm, I'm thinking, um, nothing. I, like, but it's so powerful, right? Because our minds, like, we've got to loosen the grip with our minds, right? And so loosening the grip with our minds is loosening our grasp on the story, on that thought, on that complaint, on that belief, whatever it is for each one of us. There's something, you know, there's something that we just hold on to and we just, it's, that's so annoying and that blah, 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 right? But it's like gratitude is the secret sauce of spirituality. <laughs> and we can use it 
to transform. And so I remember in that moment with my sponsor, I felt that gratitude wash over me as I tuned into it, you know, tune into it. And then it dissipates anything that is unlike the light, the truth, the divine, the amazing, beautiful, spiritually radiant person you came here to be. Are you with me? Yeah. Right, yeah. And so I learned that day that shift happens, and shift happened that day. <laughs> shift happened that day. And so from that moment on, I knew that when I started to go down the route of darkness and negativity, I could shift my mindset instantly with gratitude. So we all have that power. You have that power now as well. Then I bought a journal, and, and you know now they have like specifically devoted to uh, gratitude journals where you just open it up and start listing. But I like to get a journal that's beautiful, you know, and it's something that I can just go to, and I know I'm going to it, and I will write what I'm grateful for in the morning and in the evening, and it's like this fun relationship building, you know. I love that. Now, for the guys, you may have a manly thing, okay? It's cool. <laughs> it's cool to have something totally manly that's like, I don't know, like looks like a circuit board or <laughs> I mean, I don't know. <laughs> a guitar or, a, you know, whatever. Maybe it's in your phone. There's a manly way to do this, okay? <laughs> right? <Carbon and> rock. <laughs> he said we carve it in rock. Fine, that's cool. Yeah, it's cool. Carbon and rock, whatever you're going to do. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> My gosh. Okay. So I want to share uh, a story about, I said I was going to talk about India today. So um, for those of you that don't know, it's, gosh, it's been 12 years now. In 2009, I traveled to India, and I was there for a month. And it was... Uh, life-changing, right? It was so transformational and so powerful and, uh, and so intense, you know? There was just so much that happened in India, and anyone that goes will tell you that. And, uh, and so I had this experience in the train station, and that's what I'm going to talk about today. So uh, when I traveled, there were 13 of us, 13 traveling companions, and we had one uh, leader of the traveling tour, right? Her name is Gina Salah. And uh, we had stayed for five nights in Varanasi, India. Has anybody here ever been to India? Oh, cool. So you may know exactly where I'm talking about. And so did anybody over here, did anyone's hands come up? Oh, a couple of you. Cool. Yeah. And so uh, we stayed for five nights in Varanasi, and it was time for us to now head into Agra. We were going to go see the Taj Mahal. Super exciting. And uh, I was just, yeah, it's one of the wonders of the world, right? And we were really looking forward to this. So we arrived at the train station early <laughs> uh, to catch our 10 p.m. train. And uh, it's very hot in India at the time that we were there. It was like late September, early October, I believe. So it's very hot, and you could just be standing there, like not doing anything, just breathing and sweating, like profusely, <laughs> you know, just profusely sweating. It felt like it was 800 degrees there, right? <laughs> like 100 degrees temperature and 80% humidity equals sweat. <laughs> it's not fun, you know? And so... Um, also, the train stations there are not really like ours here. They're a little bit different. Uh, for starters, there I remember seeing uh, rats the size of my head, <laughs> big rats. And then I saw like beetles the size of my hand, and then some flying insects that I wasn't quite sure what those were. But I mean, I was like, ah. <laughs> I don't think I like this. <laughs> I don't think I like this. Trying to find my spiritual center at the same time, you know. Cows, 
roaming around in the train station. I mean, are you here with me in the train station now? So I'm in the train station, there's cows and there's people, lots and lots of people. It's getting hotter, we're waiting, uh, we're waiting and waiting and it feels like we're melting and then we hear over the loudspeaker, our train is delayed by two hours and now we're waiting on the midnight train to Agra. <laughs> and so now we're like, oh my gosh, and I'm, I'm cranky. I'm cranky, I feel it in me, you know that feeling where you're just done, you're like over it. <laughs> Patrick knows it, <laughs> he's like, oh man, because <laughs> he's seen it in others. <laughs> Not Jan, but he's seen it in others, yeah. <laughs> and so we're in, we're in that circle, right, of our people. Anyway, we have so much luggage. Can you imagine 14 travelers from the United States to India for a month? We've got a mountain of luggage. <laughs> it's wild. And I'm sitting on my, one of my pieces of luggage, and I'm, I'm just like, yeah, I just I don't want to be here. And I have that look, like, <laughs> you know, yeah, eh, eh, yeah. And then, uh, and then suddenly, though, our leader begins to play her harmonium and she had dug this harmonium out from the mountain of luggage and a harmonium, if you don't know, is a pump organ that generates uh, sound as the air flows past this vibrating piece of thin metal. And it's in this frame, it's like a box. Have you seen the harmoniums? You've seen them, yeah. <laughs> and so uh, she starts playing this harmonium and that's her thing, that's kind of what she does and we're on this river of sound tour in India learning about chanting and all of this, and, and she starts chanting. She's playing her harmonium chanting, and she began to sing, Hara Hara Mahadeva Shambho, Kashi Vishvanatha Gange, and over and over, right? And she's singing, and people begin to sing along, right? Even the natives there, they, they start joining. They join the circle. We're in a circle, and there's like three people deep now. Everyone's singing. There's these women in beautiful jewel-toned saris, and they've got the giant nose rings, and they're singing and clapping. And it is, the energy is just amazing. And spirit moves me to jump up, and I'm like singing Hada Hada Mahadeva Shambo right in that energy, you know? I'm feeling good, like I let all of that upset go. And I was so grateful for that change in the environment that I forgot about why I was upset. I totally forgot that it was 800 degrees. <laughs> And I was sweating, and I, you know, so now I'm moving and singing, and there's more sweat, but I didn't care. I didn't care. I was like, uh, I was up, and I was feeling good, and then suddenly, feeling that wonderful energy out of nowhere, like literally out of nowhere, someone handed me a battery-operated fan. And it had lights on it, and it was flashing, and it was like red, yellow, green, blue, spinning so fast, just pushing hot air into my face. <laughs> but I was so grateful. It was like, oh! <laughs> I was so amazed, right? I felt gratitude like never before wash over my entire body. And I was so full, like my heart was so full and overflowing with so much love, so much appreciation. And, you know, I thought that I was grateful and I felt the gratitude um, because of the gift of the fan. But I realized that the true present was the experience of gratitude. So that experience of gratitude energized my body. It transformed my attitude that day and for the rest of the trip. So gratitude is powerful, right? Gratitude is so powerful. And yeah, it was awesome, <laughs> right? <laughs> Thank you. So um, I want to move into talking a little bit about Jesus now.
We're going to shift gears and talk about Jesus. Now, um, Jesus gave thanks, right? Jesus was grateful, and he was all about love. He was grateful, though. Jesus gave thanks and commanded the law to work. Now, I love this, and I loved researching more about Jesus uh, because, actually, in this teaching, we believe that Jesus uh, was the great example rather than the great exception and that we all actually have access to God uh, through the consciousness of Jesus Christ, but not through Jesus the man who is no longer physically here, because why would God only allow one person to access this divine light? I don't believe that, right? I don't believe that. That's not the God I believe in. That doesn't sing to my heart and fill my soul. It makes me feel like, well, I'm doomed, you know, and, I, and that's not the truth. So Jesus as the great example, right, is what we're up to. So Jesus always gave thanks and commanded the outcome, and it would manifest. He never asked God to answer his prayers or thought, hey, maybe this will work. Thank you, God. Come on. You know? And he was never like, God, I hope this works because everyone is watching. <laughs> Everyone's watching. We got to feed these people. He knew the power of his word, right? He knew it, and he used it to heal the sick, to raise the dead, and to feed the hungry. He commanded that Lazarus come out of his tomb, that the sick man take up his mat and walk, and he fed the multitudes with a few loaves and bread and a couple of fish, right? So he practiced gratitude, and we ought to as well. Now some of the examples. Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I know that you always hear me, but I say this for the benefit of the people standing here so they may believe that you sent me. Lazarus, come out, right? Lazarus, come out. And Lazarus rose from the dead. He rose up. And the miracle of the loaves and fishes, Jesus was preaching to a crowd of thousands who grew hungry and they needed to be fed, right? They were out in the middle of nowhere. All these people had followed him out there. And, and Jesus asks his disciples to feed them. And the disciples are like, uh... We don't have any food. Let's just send them home. Let's send them home and so they can go eat. And Jesus is like, we're not done. We are not done here. I'm getting the God bumps. Ooh, it's good. We're not done here. Um, so the disciples were like, all right, we'll see what we can find. And they came back with five loaves and two fish, right? And there were 5,000 people to feed and and they're you know they're they're not sure how this is going to work out the disciples are like okay jesus you know here you go and what did he do right this is the story in the bible he looked up to the heaven and he thanked god and then he broke the bread and he placed the pieces of bread in baskets and handed the baskets to the bleh, to the disciples to distribute to the people and the baskets were never depleted never depleted like the bottomless salad at the Olive Garden, right? <laughs> you can just keep at, we gotta have things we can relate to, right? <laughs> right, you just, it keeps coming. They'll just keep bringing it to you and bringing it and bringing it, you know? In that way, he was grateful. Jesus gave thanks and commanded the law to work. And so this is how we are moving into this month, giving thanks and commanding the law to work. So we're giving thanks for all that we have, and we are giving thanks for all that we have yet to receive. Whatever we're seeking to experience in our lives, we're giving thanks for that in advance as if we already have it. Thank you, Spirit, for this amazing job that I love with the right income for me and with uh, perfect benefits and, and the best coworkers ever, et cetera, et cetera. Thank you, Spirit, for this time off. I'm so ready for this rest. Thank you, Spirit, for uh, the release of this excess weight that is no longer serving me. I feel so good now that I'm at my ideal weight. Like that, right? And then we begin to transform. So that brings us to the book of the month for this month, 
which is called The Gratitude Formula. And this book is by Mae McCarthy. It's the seven step success system to create a life that you love. And this book is available for purchase over on the table. I think there's a, you get a discounted price actually if you buy it from us. So it should also be available uh, in bookstores or do they have bookstores anymore? <laughs> Just one, huh? <laughs> there's one in slow that I know of. Um, so anyway, this is the book of the month. And at the beginning of the service, I mentioned that we are going to kick our gratitude practice up a notch. I'm kicking mine up a notch for this month and and because uh, I want to experiment with this, right? I want to I want to see how it goes. And I'm always up for uh, new experiences and new uh, spiritual uh, revelations. And so why not? Right. So she's got this amazing seven step process, right? It begins on page 21. And so we'll send this out also uh, if you don't have the book or can't afford the book at this time or can't find the book or whatever the case is. Um, actually, if you are here and you want the book, please talk to me. I will get you the book. How's that? And then we'll also uh, email the info for you for the seven steps. So. We are going to adopt this seven-step formula that she presents in the book. Now, you can read all the way up to that section, or if you want to just get started right away, you can go right to page 21, all right? Now, she, I love the way that she begins because she has worked in the corporate world for quite a while, and in her, um, the God of her understanding, she calls the chief spiritual officer. And so you'll see her referring to the CSO because she works with, she's the CEO, you know, and so she often has the people that, uh, that she collaborates with, our CFOs and COOs. So she's collaborating, co-creating, right, with the divine, which is her CSO. Now you can call it CSO, whatever you call it though, right? Divine, spirit, whatever it is, the truth, the universe, God, use that okay and so uh, we've got steps one through four in the morning which are first read something inspirational all right read something inspirational number two write a gratitude letter and this is every morning right through the month of november write a gratitude letter that starts she even breaks it down in the book it starts dear god dear cso whatever dear god and then you do, you do your gratitude statements for what you have now. Thank you, God, for the beautiful family that I have. Thank you, God, for my beautiful home. Thank you, God, for my awesome clothes, whatever. And then the next step is gratitude statements for what you want, but word it as if you already have them. So again, thank you, God, for this perfect job, which I love so much. <laughs> it's the best job ever. And, uh, and then the next part is you state the following, I now release these words to the universe and am confident and grateful that it is all done. And then the fifth is close your letter as you normally would. Yours truly, Elizabeth, <laughs> right? And then you're going to speak what you wrote out loud. You're going to speak it for up to five minutes. So you may be reading your letter a couple of times, two, three times, right? Just see how it goes. And then you're going to imagine experiencing your good. Imagine what it feels like, what you feel like when you are experiencing that good, right? So you're going to spend some time with that. And then five and six, steps five and six occur throughout your day. And so uh, throughout your day, you're going to expect leads. She calls them leads and follow directions. So the leads are, uh, you know, you declare something in your life or you state your intention for the day. Have you noticed that suddenly people come forward uh, speaking about the same things or you're inspired to read something and it was exactly what you were just thinking you wanted to manifest or, you know, you get all these, they, she's calling them leads, right? Um, they're God winks. And so notice those and expect those and then follow your inner guidance. <clears throat> so follow that inner guidance. 
In other words, if something inspires you out of nowhere to go over to this place that you're like, I don't normally go there. Why would Instead of arguing with that, pick yourself up, get over there, and just check it out, right? Because that could be one of your leads to that God wink for the experience of what you're actually seeking. You with me? Okay, good. I didn't hear a lot of mm-hmms. <laughs> Everyone's with me, right? Okay, good. And the sixth is celebrate your wins and note your demonstrations. And she even says you could find a celebration partner, which that sounds pretty fun. Like, you, you know, someone that you can just share your celebration with. Um, but you don't have to do that. But you can, you know, celebrate your wins, though. Make note of them in your journals, at least. And then the evening practice is gratitude and forgiveness. And so you'll speak gratitude out loud from the day for anything you experienced in your day that pleased you. Anything that pleased you throughout the day. And then there's a forgiveness statement that you're going to speak out loud, which goes like this. Spirit, if there is anyone from my past or present that I need to forgive, whether I remember them or not, I now do so. I bless them, I love them, I forgive them, and I release them into your care, knowing that you will work with them in whatever way is best. And if there is anyone from my past or present who needs to forgive me, including myself, they now do so. And we are all free to experience a higher and greater good in our lives, and so it is. Right? <laughs> yeah. So uh, this takes about 30 minutes. This, uh, the morning practice, 30 minutes, and then the evening practice is more like 5 to 10 minutes, right? And so your homework assignment, should you choose, your mission, should you choose to accept it, is that. How many of you are going to follow along with that with me? Are you all going to do it? Yeah, awesome. Let's do this. <laughs> So uh, I'm going to invite the band uh, to now begin to make their way forward as I wrap it up here. And as a reminder, that whole thing that I shared is in this Gratitude Formula book starting at page 21. If you would like the book and you are temporarily experiencing a financial challenge, please speak to me and I'll get that for you. And um, let's see. In closing, if the only prayer you ever said in your life was thank you, it would be enough. And we are called to remember that an attitude of gratitude is most salutary. And remember that gratitude actually paves the way for miracles to occur. So we are called to be like Jesus and give thanks and command the law to work. Let's pray. Ah, oh, so turning our attention inward, we return to that beautiful, expansive space within. And this is the space where I know and remember with every fiber of my being that spirit is all that there is. It is all that there ever was, and it is all that there ever will be. And I'm so grateful in this moment to have this recognition and understanding the awareness that there is something operating in my life that is greater than these thoughts that I am thinking. There is something operating in my life that is greater than the conditions and experiences that I see in my life, and I am tapped into it. I'm tapped into it right now. And as I remember that, I remember that all the power in the universe is right within me. The strength of God is mine to use. The gratitude is mine to tune into. And so I give thanks for this day. I give thanks for this service. I give thanks for the Atascadero Lake Pavilion for allowing us to have these services here. I give thanks for the band and for all the beauty and inspiration <laughs> that they bring to the service and to this community. I give thanks for each individual here for showing up because without the individuals here, we wouldn't have a community. 
I'm so grateful for the way that Spirit has moved and grooved to bring this group, this community together for such a time as this to experience a new frequency. We are all here to actually increase that vibrational frequency of the planet. And as we increase it for ourselves and our own lives, others are touched by it. And that ripple goes out and transformation is occurring, not only in our own lives, but in the lives of our friends and our families, in the lives of all of the people we come in contact throughout the day, the barista, the gas station, the people we work with, and so on and so forth. And oh, it's so good. It is so good and I am so grateful. I'm so grateful that we have each remembered on this day that we are gifted, shifted, and lifted into this higher vibration of gratitude. And we have committed to up-leveling that practice this month. And I know that spirit is on our side right now and always, and we are so blessed. I'm so grateful, and I feel thankful. Feel that with me, that gratitude. Feel that in this moment, that feeling of appreciation, that feeling that arises when you say thank you. So thank you, Spirit. Thank you. Thank you for this and so much more. Thank you for all of the invisible blessings that are on the way into our lives even right now. I'm so grateful as I release this prayer into that loving and creative action of the law, which is the divine manufacturing plant that puts it together and spits it out on the other side. And it's already done because we are one with the one and it's fun. <laughs> I'm grateful to take my hands off of it and relax into joyful anticipation and cheerful expectancy. And so it is. When all the dark clouds roll away and the sun begins to shine I see my freedom across the way and it comes right in on time and it shines so bright yeah it gives off so much light comes from the sky above make me feel so free yeah, it makes me feel like me and it lights my life of love and it seems like seems like Feels like and it seems like seems like feels like a brand new day a brand new day brand new day brand new day
is right in all time. It eases me, it appeases me, and it satisfies my mind. And it seems like, seems like, feels like, feels like, it seems like, seems like. Okay, it's now time for our gifts, tithes, and offerings, if uh, or conscious giving. Do we have ushers today? Would they please come forward, please? <laughs> Department of Redundancy Department. <laughs> All right, and so friends, um, if this service has inspired you in any way, I invite you to please consider making a donation to support our vision, and uh, your donation does great work in the world. And if you're on Zoom, I think Alexandra is there and she is giving you a link to where you can make your donation. We appreciate uh, your love and generosity. So let's go ahead and do our affirmation if you will place your gift over your heart and repeat after me, divine love through me. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies. Blesses and multiplies all that I have. All that I have. All that I give. All that I give. And all that I receive. And all that I receive. Joyously I give. Joyously I give. And joyfully I receive. And joyfully I receive. And so it is. Divine love flows through me, blessing all I give. Divine love flows through me, blessing. amazing morning. So much to be grateful for. So much gratitude that we have in our hearts. So we give thanks for these blessings of generosity that are in this basket that benefits all of Awakening Ways. Mm -hmm. We give gratitude for the amazing talk from Reverend Elizabeth reminding us there is so much to be grateful for in our life. And the musicians this morning have lifted us so high. We are so grateful grateful for them. So we give thanks to the divine, we give thanks to the beloved for all that we are, all that we have, and all that we are going to be. We give, as I give these words unto the law, together we say, and, and so, so it is. is. Leave it on, leave it on. Leave it on. All right, we'll now have the uh, Sonia and the kids come in, or children. <laughs> Yeah, got to 
get up here. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Aww. Yeah, come on in. So I have Sirsha, Liam, and Anya. And they were absolutely wonderful today. Um, we just had a peaceful journey. We're very mindful, um, found our joy, and talked about things that we're grateful for. So Liam, our very brave spirit right here, is uh, going to say the affirmation. Yeah. So just take a nice deep breath. Start to close eyes. I'm grateful for who I am, and I'm grateful for the life I have. Yeah. yeah. Woo. Me too. Thank you. Woohoo! All right. Dun 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 dun. <laughs> All right, friends. <laughs> Let's. Oh, I almost forgot about the announcements. Our announcements angel is coming up now. <laughs> <laughs> I'll entertain. <laughs> Good morning, Awakening Ways. My name is Travis Hogan. I'm your announcements angel. Can the back row hear me? Zoomers, can you hear me? Or do we call them? Okay, good. We, do we call them Zoomites? Zoomers? Zoomies? Zoomies. They're Zoomers. Okay. Zoomies. All right. That's right. My name is Travis. I'm your friendly neighborhood announcements angel. And this is the announcements for Sunday, November 7th. I do have an attitude of gratitude. I am gifted, shifted, and lifted. Thank you, Reverend Elizabeth. If this is your first time here in the room, or in Zoom, or watching a replay on our YouTube channel, welcome. <laughs> All right. Uh, for the first announcement, Healthy Body Connecting Circles. Today, Patricia Alexander will be hosting the Healthy Body Connecting Circle at our office at 7350 ECR, or El Camino Real, whichever. Uh, from 12.30 to 2 p.m. She will have a special guest, her own personal trainer, Debbie Blossom Miles. Everyone is welcome, and you can speak with Patricia after service for more information. Can Patricia please stand? Patricia. <laughs> Patricia, would you be willing to come up and explain what we're going to be doing this afternoon? <laughs> For the Zoomers, in fact, I'll stand in front, <laughs> so, I, so it's not just a floating head. <laughs> um, we're, Debbie Blossom Miles has been a trainer specializing in injury prevention and injury recovery, um, and just, just she has all kinds of training, and she's, I've had the pleasure of working with her for, goodness, over 10 years. Um, she has a, a deep amount of knowledge for keeping one safe and for all the benefits of any kind of activity. And she's going to demonstrate some and answer questions. And anyway, if you are feeling like you could have more activity in your life, uh, you are absolutely welcome. You don't have to be in attend, attend Awakening Ways in order to come. That's the beauty of our connecting circles. So um, I'll be available after this uh, if you want to talk to me about anything more. And thank you very much. That is beautiful. So uh, health and nutrition are a passion of our family, and I'm looking forward to spending the afternoon with you at this. This is great. All right, next on the announcements, Love's Table. Woo! Love's Table. Two weeks from today, Sunday, November 21st, immediately after service, we will celebrate the season and our blessings with Love's Table. This is going to be a potluck. The sign-up sheet for your name and what delicious item you are bringing to share 
is near the prayer table, the prayer box, in the back corner. So right over there, there's a sign-up sheet. Put your deliciousness on there. Okay. <laughs> Reverend Elizabeth's birthday donations on Facebook. This has been super fun, uh, and it's been, watching, it's been fun watching the donations grow. So as of Saturday morning, the total is... Uh, $1,000 towards our goal of $1,500. So if you didn't know this was happening, it has uh, been extended out. It will end on uh, uh, November 13th, and uh, we're just $500 more to meet our goal. So uh, we welcome any uh, consideration to join in on the fun. So that's Reverend Elizabeth's birthday donations fundraiser on Facebook. All right. Midweek. Spiritual check-in with Reverend Elizabeth. Every Wednesday, for you Zoomers, or those of you in this room that are into Zooming and you have the time, on Wednesday at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, the email with the Zoom link is sent out on Tuesday. So that reminds me, if you're not already on the Awakening Ways newsletter, you might want to sign up, because that's where all of the info that's happening around here is sent out. All right. Also on our website. Yes. Okay. Um, and I'm almost done here. So I'd like to raise and praise for just a moment our soul support team, our beloved Awakening Ways ministers and practitioners holding our community in prayer. We thank you, beautiful souls. For those of you that are on Zoom, we salute you. Those of you in the room, can you stand up if you're a practitioner or a minister? And just let's give them some love. Love you, soul support team. And Delon, yes. All right, thank you. And, and finally, if you're interested in participating, we have openings for sacred service here at Awakening Ways. Uh, volunteers, if you uh, are interested, you can come see me or Jan, and we would love to plug you in to where you feel called to serve. Uh, right now, Brian and I are assembling our tech team with audio and visual support. So that's sound, lighting, live stream. Uh, so come and see me after service. And uh, that, my beloveds, has been the announcements. Thank you very much. <laughs> Excellent, Travis. Thank you, announcements angel. All right, friends, let's circle up. Circle up. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And won't you know with me that you are never alone, that God is where you are right now and always, and all that we ever need do is turn within. And it is here we will find we are guided, sustained, directed, and inspired by a source that knows only good. Joyously let us make use of these gifts in all that we think, in all that we say, and in all that we do. Please repeat after me, something wonderful is happening as me right now. Something wonderful is happening as me right now. It is this thing called life. It is this thing called life. Life is in my mind. Life is in my mind. Life is in my body. Life is in my body. Life is in my pocketbook. Life is in my pocketbook. I think it. I think it. I feel it. I feel it. I believe it. I believe it. I express it. I express it. I accept it. I accept it. Just the way that it is. And just the way that it is not. And just the way that it is not. Thank you, life. Thank you, life. Woo. <laughs> May I be filled with loving kindness. Thank you. 
Samson. 